as well as being an excellent mathematician, Bill has made lots and lots of contributions to the, the mathematical community. And as most of us all know, he was managing editor of Geometria Identicata for 10 years, something like that. Nine years. Nine years. And so we thought it was fitting that in honor of Bill, we would have a special volume of Geometria Identicata dedicated to him. Uh, and we're opening it up to all of the participants that if you would like to submit a paper um, in honor of Bill, then if, if you could do this by the end of September, we'll send, send emails around um, and then these will get refereed in the usual way and hopefully it will come out before too long. So if you have any questions, you can ask me or you can ask Richard and, and we will um, hopefully be able to answer them. Right, our next speaker um, is Francois Labarie. Uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I, I, I have a... <laughs> it's not all about you. It is all about me. <laughs> I have, I belong to, I'm on Facebook. I know it's maybe a full passe and everything. I like the pictures. Bill goes to South Africa, he sends me pictures. He goes all over the place. Sarah climbs some stupid mountain. I'm still ticked <laughs> off about. Look, beautiful pictures. One day, I see a notification. The notification says, I have a friend request. The friend request is from Francois Labarie. <laughs> I immediately say yes. <laughs> and I sent an email, too, or a message. I forget which one. And I said, so this means we're friends. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> I believe Francois' reaction was, me. <laughs> so our next speaker, Francois Labrie, who is uh, the 2016 laureate, and you'll have to say the name of the prize. Uh, French prize. The French prize. <laughs> <laughs> Frenchy prize. Uh, and my personal, well, maybe maybe not personal, but <laughs> Facebook friend, <laughs> Francois. Okay, thank you for the friendly. Uh, and so uh, I'm very proud and an honor to be here. And uh, uh, I don't know how long I've uh, known Bill. I think we met for the first time in Paris, 1992 something, when uh, Rich Rich was with uh, visiting as well. So and since then, I've, uh, I visited him quite often, and he has also visited uh, me in Marseille or elsewhere. So, uh, so I've been a regular visitor in Maryland of his office, and I remember that we have been uh, in his office where this is a nice couch, and uh, we have been talking and working very, very hard, and uh, sometimes suddenly waking up. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so yeah. So, uh, so all the speakers have explained how influential has the, the build of mathematics been, and uh, it has certainly been for me. And it's uh, something to talk a little bit about it at some point. And it's basically the, the the founding father of our field, which is a of this research study of the of uh, geometric structure theory. And I, I think we all owe him a lot, and in particular our salary because we're working. With <laughs> so let's move to this talk. So I'm the first present for a uh, bill. I'm going to give a pretty boring, um, uh, very confused and uh, rather incompressible talk, so that you can uh, you can sleep without any. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, so um, so the goal is to try to explain what could be higher lamination for Hitchin representations. So I'm going to uh, explain again what are Hitchin representations, and, uh, um, and it's going to be uh, not that difficult because it has already been done here. 
So then I'm going to give a wish list for what should be this higher animation. And, uh, and uh, I will explain the little device that links to uh, the wish list. And for that, I first need to explain what are cross ratios. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Really, it's supposed to be recorded? Now we're going to put it on Facebook. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, so I'm going to explain this notion of cross ratios, and then I explain that this uh, notion of tropical cross ratio is going to, uh, to somehow make the link between two uh, possible uh, notions of our higher, higher lamination. And then I will talk about this uh, universal representation of a surface group, which is a pretty skinny object. And uh, finally, I will explain uh, what's the relation with action and building of this tropical cross ratio. So, um, okay, so we start with a well, favorite object, which is a, a surface, which is connected, homogeneous, and uh, what else, a table, and a closed. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, oh genius uh, of two. And we call uh, the total uh, group, we call it phi 1 of s. And so we're interesting here, and thanks to Bill, to the representation of the surface group into some legal. And in particular, um, there's this uh, theory by Pucci, which was published in 1992, I think, uh, and which is a really so very important uh, theorem in our field. So I just extract a piece of information from this beautiful theorem that if you take a, if you take a, if you put a Riemann surface, a Riemann surface structure on X, on S, Mean that you choose a complex structure, then there is this very specific component, sorry, of the, uh, of the space of representation of gamma in PSL, in PSL. So this, this connected component is actually identified. And this connected component, which I will put H of E, and you can just do this H, is related to, uh, to this, uh, to this uh, sum of uh, polymorphic differential, but that's a different H. Okay. <laughs> So that's a theorem, and uh, it's a beautiful theorem. And uh, since uh, and after that, uh, uh, we uh, now know a lot about this uh, representations. And for instance, uh, what did I put here? All the signs are so far. So yeah. So this uh, each representation that act properly in some symmetric space. They are monodromic of geometric structures. So that was done by uh, Sergey Troy and uh, Bill Goldman. Uh, just uh, right after the patient uh, uh, results, so for D is equal to 3, and then uh, Gishaf and Pinot gave a, a, a generalization somehow of this result. So, one important feature is that they possess nice limit curves which are mapped from the boundary at infinity to into this quality space on the board, quality spaces. They are associated to geodesic curves. So, uh, so maybe I should uh, uh, precise what, what is a geodesic current. So we have this object, which is this uh, space of geodesics, so which is a, the boundary at infinity of gamma, plus the boundary at infinity of gamma, minus a diagonal. So why is this, a, why is this a, the, the set of geodesics? Because if you take two points on the boundary at infinity, which are pairwise, which are actually pairwise distinct, there are just two of them. So then there is a unique geodesic uh, between the two. So that's the space of geodesics. And so what is a geodesic current? A new, a, so a geodesic current. Is a uh, locally uh, finite measure on G, which is so, um, uh, so this uh, is uh, Jersey currents have been used very uh, quickly by, by Francis Bonao, for instance, and they do play a fundamental role in the Hitchin uh, Soviet Hitchin representation, and somehow they lurk around, lurk behind the uh, Hitchin uh, talk, uh, quite possibly. So you have this notion of geodesic currents, and uh, so what else? Oh yes. Oh, oh sorry. So uh, um, so this uh, each representation associated to Jersey current. I'm not going to explain how, but 
because that's an important feature. And uh, this moduli space of uh, each in the representation have a shearing coordinates. So the shearing coordinates have been uh, included in the case of open surfaces by Fock and Gonchalov, and the case of uh, closed surfaces by Bonau and Dreyer. And um, that's important, uh, an important feature of that. So these objects, I mean, all these trade-offs tend to suggest that this Hitchin representation are uh, really a good day uh, generalization. Well, maybe we shouldn't apply generalization. It seems to be having the, the whole, not the whole Teichmer thing, but the, 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 let's say the first and fifth element theory of a Teichmer space somehow extends to this uh, Hitchin representation. So there's obviously one piece missing which is very uh, fruitful in the case of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the study of fashionable spaces. I just took for five minutes, right, already? <coughs> OK. Which is, is uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> no? So um, you start a little over. That's a space time feature. <laughs> <laughs> this is the engineering building. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's one, one, piece of, uh, one piece of geometry which is missing, which is very useful, which is a, a geodesic lamination. So what are the geodesic laminations? So let's, uh, let's try to, to at least have a wish list of for higher laminations. So, so let's uh, consider the first uh, classical case of a, uh, of a passionless space. So geodesic laminations, so what do they do? So first thing, they provide a compactification of Fleischmann space, so this is one, one thing which is very useful. And they come in various guises. So one of the guises is, is to be a, there are geodesic currents, not only geodesic currents, but geodesic currents that you can actually uh, recognize. So these are two that so geodesic currents whose self-intersection is zero. So the class of geodesic currents will satisfy a certain property. So then, a, uh, uh, quite importantly, they also, a correspond to quadratic differentials. If you pick a complex structure on the surface, geodesic lamination can be described by, by geodesic lamination. So that's a uh, uh, Maser uh, theorem, which is a very model as well. And uh, the other property that the modulized space of, of, uh, of, uh, of geodesic lamination have, have, uh, have uh, a piecewise inner structure. And let's say some other feature again is that uh, that uh, they correspond to action of trees. So obviously we have nice candidates for what could be higher lamination, and higher lamination should also have the kind of same, same kind of similar properties. And for instance, they should be complexification of this uh, teaching component. They should a, be recognizable uh, geodesic currents. And uh, we would like them to be um, uh, associated to uh, to if you pick a complex structure on the surface to some bunch of holomorphic differentials. And this is, uh, so this is, this is also like in this field, so there's some work of, uh, of uh, John Martin, of uh, Michael, of uh, Duba, and also this uh, very important piece of, uh, of, uh, of physics by Gaiotto Moore, <coughs> which provides some very nice uh, project that should be linked to this higher learning, potentially linked to this higher lamination. So, um, so they should also have a PL structure, piecewise linear structure. So um, it so happened that for folk uh, culture up a, a uh, moduli space uh, in the context of open surfaces, um, so there is this notion of particle points. So folk culture moduli space of space which are <laughs> <laughs> Spaces are defined by coordinates, yeah. and uh, it's, what's important is that you have this change of coordinates, and this change of coordinates are positive rational functions. And you can there is this process of propagandization, <laughs> and, uh, and, and if you tropicalize the change of coordinates, you obtain a piecewise linear structure of the tropical points. 
So anyway, there is this uh, a notion of a, so Falkland Gashamov has a, a notion of a tropical forest, which will somehow provide the compactification of that, and they do have a PL structure. So it turns out that all these points of view are uh, not really uh, related yet. Once you turn it off, what, what did I do? <laughs> you press the black button. Something there is a black button? <laughs> 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 oh, I forgot to tell you. Okay, and uh, okay. finally, there should be a relation to action on trees. Um, and in our case, we of course accept uh, uh, hope for action on buildings. So action on buildings, this is a pretty uh, crowded field already, so there is a starting with the result of Antaro. And then there's a lot of work like uh, by Daniele Alessandrini, so this is new result by uh, Roger um, Pazzetti. Um, it's also related to this uh, work by Katak of North Foundation Simpson. So that's a that's a wish list of uh, higher lamination, but uh, uh, so far, oh, okay, and there's something which we actually we would like also, that would be the test of that we have a good notion, that's the earthquake, right? Yeah? So we would like this higher lamination to, to define a functions on the on kitchen components, and so that the Hamiltonian flows, so this is the Solomon symplectic structure, Hamiltonian flows of these functions connect to points. So that would be one of the tests to say that that's, that's a good notion that you want. So, as I said, lots of work has been done, but I, in my opinion, the situation is pretty confusing. We have all these different notions that are not really connected, so I, I of course, want to uh, add more conclusion to that. <laughs> Which I'm going to do now. So what do we have next? Okay. So, before that, I want to, uh, to introduce a new device which is a way to, again, to parameterize or to recognize a Gitchin representation. So let's start with this uh, notion of a close ratio. So, um, so um, I've already uh, given several definitions of close ratio, which are pretty uh, incompatible between themselves. I'm pretty sure this one is yet another <laughs> compatible one. So what is a cross ratio? It satisfies a, it's a function of four points. It's a whole pairwise distinct point that ends up in, in, a, in, a, in a non non-zero number. So it satisfies a certain cosicol identity. So the cosicol identity is written. I'm not going to, to spell it, but we have to understand what, what this cosicol identity means. So, so here is a this a relation is given by the relation of procedural with currents, and this is a, something which has been done by Francis, I guess, Otal, Amanchat, and the So. So let's consider this space of, of currents again. So the space of currents is a locally of product, right? So now imagine that you have a cost ratio, and, uh, and then you want to define a measure. So you have these uh, four points. You, you put in a little square like that. And you have these four points. So. Um, so, uh, so here is the point where W is, com is where there is a second. So this horizontal is where the uh, second factor is constant. At t, and here at x and y. So this is the point x t, and you have all these other the points. So you have four points like that. And so, what is a what is this cosicol identity? Just say that the quantity that you define mu of x y z t. U of this square. There's a W. So you, you, you exactly want that the new the uh, the measure of this square is equal to the logarithm of the plus function of B of x y. So this is the formula which I which I write here. So um, so um, then you can see that the cosicol identity is just to say that this quantity measure is actually the additive. So, so if you don't want to think about the cycle, it doesn't mean you think anything that uh, um, you should relate that to curve. So you say, why, say why, what's the point about cross ratios? You say the same thing as curve. So the point is come from this uh, the theorem. Which, uh, so I just said before that you can 
associate to a uh, teaching representations some geodesic currents. And this geodesic currents are related to some cost ratios. And it turned out that these cost ratios are actually recognizable. So, so, so what can you do with say with a, a cross ratio? So you can you can you can start doing some pretty complicated functions. So you take a configuration of points and you introduce this function which is determinant of, of matrices with coefficient and cost ratio. So that's a function on the on the on configuration of points. And then now it turned out that you can actually recognize each in representations as I mean, you can identify the Hitchin component with the space of cross ratios of rung D. So what is the cross ratio of rung D? So you have the requirement, I'm sorry. So you have this requirement that this, uh, this function, when you take D, the uh, a D plus one for D plus one matrix, this is determined by zero, and you require that this determinant is non-zero for N less than D when the configuration is, let's say, generic. So that's your that's your that's your uh, statement. So, so what is nice about this statement? Uh, I shouldn't maybe say that. But what I like about this statement is that it gives a totally algebraic uh, way to recognize a Hitchin representation. So I'm going to make use of the fact that this I'm really using algebraic equation here. So the result is more precise because saying something is deformed into time. Mean, saying a ball is deformed into a ball is not very really exciting. But it turned out that it's a geometric quantity that you can build out of each representation that you can recognize in the cross ratio on the cross ratio side. Yep. Are these, is it really cross ratio of points in Euclidean space or projective space? Or, or is it just. So these points are points in the boundary at infinity. Yeah, it's, it's a, they, are, they are points in the, in the boundary at infinity. Yeah, exactly. So they come from the limit curve. And so now that is it, there is some kind of quotation defining the productive as a door or something. So I, I, I could write the formula, but that's not the best of door. <laughs> so yeah, so now it turned out that there is also some, uh, so I'm going to use this remark. Again, if we drop the second equation, which is this one, and just keep this one, it turned out that if you have a quotation which satisfies that, so I'm going to restate that, then you actually can produce out of that a representation you got gamma in case and B, which might not be Hitchin. Another example where it's this representation might not be Hitchin. So I'm again going to use that. So now, uh, again. Ah, OK. So now let's move to the tropical cross-ratio. So what is the tropical business? It's uh, to replace a uh, multiplication by addition and to uh, uh, replace addition by taking super. So the cosycle identity becomes, instead of being multiplicative identities, it becomes a uh, um, uh, additive <coughs> cosycle identity. So that, I must say that's, that's a pretty lame definition of a tropical construction. Just replace it, the, the multiplication by a class. Just taking the log. Right. Uh, Tropicalize also the uh, the relation of the determinant. Here. So that's a bit tricky because you have minuses, and this is you taking the determinant, your product, your sums, and your minuses and signs and so on. So uh, uh, so you have to take care of signs. So I'm not going to write the proper definition of uh, of this tropicalization of this uh, of this uh, formula, but uh, let's just consider one case. So one case is that so so you have this uh, configuration of points. On, the, on this S1, and uh, so let's say that all this EI are in some region, and all this e, the big the big E's are in these regions, right? So you have this configuration of points. You are not uh, any sort of intertwining into the two configuration. So now tropicalizing this uh, relation end up with this, uh, this kind of formula. It's not a very nice formula, but it's a formula. So you have this relation, and that's this uh, stuff that you want to call tropical cross ratio. So what's the point about tropical cross ratio? So I just I want my, my goal here is to explain the following uh, relation. 
as well, we'll have a notion of topical causation. And uh, that should be related to this, uh, some sort of projectivized, I mean, geodesic currents. And it should also be related to action on the And uh, of course, it's not it's supposed to be a surprise, but uh, uh, but turn out that this uh, all that is going to be pretty trivial. So how does this work? Right. So the first thing is how do you realize a, how do you realize to equalize the cross ratio out of uh, limiting a pitching representation. So that's, a, that's exactly what they uh, uh, Right, so imagine you have a sequence of pitching representation, so they correspond to a certain uh, sequence of uh, cross ratios. Uh, this cross ratio corresponds to a certain sequence of, uh, of uh, geodesic currents. So now, when you have a sequence of geodesic currents, you can Renormal, always renormalize them so that you end up in a, with a certain current again. Sometimes you will call the projectivized current. So you can this way compactify since you have an embedding of your feature representation into 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 um, into the space of currents. You you have naturally a compactification of feature representation by by projectivized currents. So that's I think that's a folklore remark that uh, everybody knows about. But the, the point is that. Essentially, as a remark, that if you if you if you if you play that game, this normalizing this uh, geodesic current, so divided by some uh, by some constant uh, family of constant a n going to infinity, and if you consider like, the uh, the uh, corresponding uh, normalized cross ratio, so you take the log and you divide by a n, so of course you end up with exactly something which is a tropical cross ratio. I mean, because uh, I don't know. So that's essentially a very easy pro proposition. So, right. So that's a way to produce uh, a tropical causations out of um, out of this uh, limiting of it. And of course, you may ask the question: Do all tropical causations come from this procedure? And the passing answer is I don't. So, where is the positivity condition? There has to be some positivity condition. Right. Right. So that's that's a that's a very good remark. So here, I'm not using the positivity. So now let's move to this. Uh, so I'm really fast. So maybe my my first question because the second one we need to have a short lecture. So oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, uh, right. So you want to to topicalize this uh, strength. So in this picture, it is uh, you have this uh, notion of the. Being, uh, this is this is this is a D, which is a round D condition. Right. Yeah. So that's replayed by this superman is equal to that. So that should be like right. No. Right. So Let's move back to this, uh, to this uh, theorem. So, so maybe I will have an answer to uh, Michel's uh, Kapovich frightening uh, 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 remark. <laughs> so the result, which is uh, so one of the one part of the result of this uh, Rang D uh, 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 description of uh, of, uh, of each representations is uh, to say that you, if you imagine you have a cross ratio B, um, the boundary at infinity of the group. So remember this object is gamma invariant. Ground B takes values in R and satisfies this, this condition, which is chi t plus 1 B is equal A is, 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 is constant equal to 0. 
Then out of this data, you can actually produce, what you produce, you actually produce limit curves, which are mapped from this, uh, with, from this boundary to the boundary to the projective space. And, uh, and uh, so you produce a representation of O from gamma to PSL. And it turned out that this, uh, the proof of that is just a proof exactly like the proof of this elementary fact in projective geometry that if you have a, a, a mapping of the projective line that preserves the cost ratio, it's actually linear. So that's, uh, that's the, the proof is pretty easy and really just algebraic. So it turned out that uh, because it's algebraic, we really don't care about a R being R. It could be any field, but actually, could be any ring. Right, so you end up with something which is in a PSL, um, uh, the group presentation in a PSL of A. So of course if A is an integral domain, this makes sense. If A is a not an integral domain, I have no idea what's a representation into some, uh, into the, the lead, what's the linear group with respect to this non-integral domain. But still does make a, a lot of sense to consider this on this side. So, uh, so the second fact, which I'm not going to use that, but that would be for the geometric, uh, uh, the group geometric uh, box here, is that actually I don't care about gamma being a, a surface group. Gamma could be anything. It could be a hyperbolic group. And this still makes sense. Okay, so this uh, construction is just uh, purely algebraic and works for any group, for any field, for any read, whatever. So wh what do I do next? Okay, so now maybe I would like to uh, give uh, one example of what is a what, what is an example one example of that. And this is going to uh, maybe justify the uh, uh, construction which I'm going to give now. So um, uh, yeah, so you could take the A as a ring. You could take this the the, the um, uh, the analytic functions on the hitching component, or C1, whatever. But let's, let's just say those analytic functions. And then, so if I have four points on the boundary at infinity, I just say that the given four points and the representation I obtain a cross ratio. So in other words, given four points, I obtain a map from the space of representation to the space of cross ratio. And this map is actually a cross ratio. So that's example. That's one example of a cross ratio with a unit ring. So this object is a cross ratio. Is a cross ratio with a in a ring. So this ring. Uh, I mean, uh, this uh, this corresponds to uh, to somehow. So it turns out that this link, this uh, ring here, is actually an integral domain. This corresponds to, to actually a linear representation of dimension B of a uh, on a SL of E, where E is a a, a vector space, a three-dimensional vector space. Over uh, the quotient ring of that. So that's definitely a good constitutor for what would be a universal surface representation. And and for those who are familiar with a Morgan Challenge contraction, this certainly rings a bell. Except that essentially you have nothing to do to say that's a representation. It's just given by the theorem where you replace we replace R with this ring. So but maybe you will want to, to obtain something which is very, very universal. So let's try to be even more universal than that. So that's a construction which I'm going to, to try to explain next. OK, so it's all about pair of points. On the, so I'm going to, uh, to, uh, to explain that on, the, on this board. So it's written here. That is the list of uh, 
definition. So, so you can just take the, uh, oh, what's the name I gave? C of gamma, P of gamma. So P of gamma is just a set of uh, expression, polynomials. Uh, so let's say uh, the coefficient are in Q, for instance, or Z or whatnot, lambda I, of a uh, product of pair of points. So it's just a polynomial algebra whose variables are pair of pairs. So it's a polynomial algebra which, is a, which has infinitely many variables. You could you could boil down that to 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 uh, to, uh, to, uh, to comfortable many variables, but let's just say if this is a big polynomial algebra, and one of the drawbacks of this construction is that's not an Euclidean. So now what you can do is you can so you, so so far we don't have yet a Randy condition. So you want to add you want to consider an ideal. Well, this ideal is I of gamma. The ideal which is generated by the determinant of expression of the form xi. I want this point to be this this this, this thing, right? <coughs> so you take the ideal which is generated exactly by the determinant of this uh, of this object. So that's an element of this algebra, like the products and so on and everything. And uh, so then you divide p, p of gamma divided by r of gamma. So that's a, a result by line almost use a shape that uh, P of gamma divided by uh, I of gamma is an integral of so, uh, so that's an integral domain. So now you can consider since you can consider it, it's quotient it's, it's quotient field. And this quotient field and inside this quotient field, you can now take the ring, which is generated by stuff which you want to call cross functions, which are exactly this kind of object. Uh, so that's a, an element of this quotient of this quotient ring. Why? So these are four more expressions, four more rational functions. And you may want to consider the ring generated by that, this quotient ring. So that's an object that you want to uh, call, uh, right, so this object that I want to call A, D of gamma. So that's, all this object corresponds to a round B cross ratio on the boundary at infinity, but I still have missed one important uh, feature, which is I want this, this object to be gamma invariant. So I have to caution by a further, I want to, I want to caution by a further ideal. Well, this ideal is exactly divided by gamma, but this is exactly generated by, by those objects which are of the form gamma, I mean, gamma of, uh, so gamma acts on this polynomial algebra, so gamma of f minus m. So in the end, what have I obtained? I've obtained a, a, a ring. I would love to know that it's a integral domain, but I don't know. And I think this is a, a, a tough point. Because if you start with any hyperbolic group, and if you divide by that, this thing might be kind of a, this thing actually tells you a lot about the group. For instance, if this ring is a, has no idempotence, then the quotient hyperbolic group is a residually finite. So, so you can check from this ring some proper deep properties of the group itself. So, but for surface group, I definitely hope that this ring is actually an integral domain, and I can even hope that this ring embeds into this uh, analytic function of the teaching group. Okay. So. No, 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 it's countably generated. It's not an Italian ring. It's uncountable. It looks uncountable. Right, it's so, so far it's still countable, but I don't, so I should have said that uh, in this theorem which I erased, Actually, I don't really care to take the whole, uh, the whole boundary at infinity. I could just take a countable set which is invariant, for instance. I could just, just could take the endpoints of, uh, of points. And that would be enough for me to construct the so presentation. So I can really use only a countably generated ring. But that's, that's still pretty nasty. 
And, and I mean that. I mean, there is. If you want to make this another representation algebraic in some way, I mean, you have to use non-Newtonian rings because you know there are infinitely many connected components. So by uh, by by. Okay. So so yeah. So this is a string which I call B of gamma. So what is this string? Truly? just a very formal object which have the property that it contains this uh, formal you say is this a formal object like that you can form this you can consider this object and you can also uh, this object satisfies this Hondi condition by the daily construction because I divide it by that okay. and they also uh, gamma invariant object so that's exactly the, the formal ring that satisfies that so um, So uh, then the, uh, now the claim is that this maps, so I, this object, which are here, to make life uh, simpler, I denote it by x, y, y, x. So now you have a natural map from uh, your, uh, your quadruple uh, uh, of points into this string, which is just to consider the, you take these four points and you associate this formal object. And of course, by the very construction, what I've done here, you know, I've built a cross ratio inside of this ring. And this object is a universal object. So it's a universal surface group representation. So uh, why is it uni universal? Being universal here exactly means that uh, So, uh, so, so, so why is it universal? It means that if you take any cross ratio b, which is a function from that configuration point into some ring, even ring r, then actually uh, there is this universal cross ratio which I just described b into this uh, ring b of gamma. And actually there exists a map here like that. So that's really a universal surface group representation. So the whole idea is that, uh, yeah, so I mean, that's also a very scheming object because I, I'm generally considering something as a, as a, um, so this, I consider the scheme of a that, and the points of that are exactly all going to progress into primary deals that are going to consider to all these possible representations that you can produce that. So let's say, a really uh, one of these, uh, uh, a dreadful construction. So, so yeah, so now a present for Bill. So, um, so I, I have been very uh, uh, amazed by the beautiful present that uh, Anna brings to Bill. So I, I said maybe I should bring him a present of some sort. So when you bring a present for him, for someone, you need to have a to bring to give him something that he doesn't have already, right? <laughs> so Bill has a lot of things. I mean, he has a... Uh, well, not <laughs> 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 so he definitely has theorems and proposition. He has also a symplectic form. That's pretty cool. For the form. <laughs> but I think the, the one which I really would like to steal from him is, is, is algebra. Right? He has this Goldman algebra, which is really an amazing object. So that's uh, so I said, what, what can I offer to a man who has an algebra? <laughs> <laughs> so how to say it? So uh, a representable counter. <laughs> so that's exactly what this object is. It's a representable counter. So that's your present though. <laughs> so you're happy with your representable functor? <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, the point about presence is sometimes you uh, you don't really like them. <laughs> Shelf and you wait for the kids to, to break them, right? So, so I'm pretty sure Todd would be very happy to break them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <Sure. laughs> so, uh, so, 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 so,
So I actually try to, so now I'm going to try to pretend that it's actually a useful thing. So, uh, so, it's, so you can apply it for this uh, implication with tropical crustaceans on building. So the point is that it's, uh, if you have a tropical crustacean, it's a map which associates to, uh, uh, to some four points a number and satisfies some uh, property. So at the beginning of property of being evaluation. So it turned out that they, uh, the theorem, the proof is uh, might even be correct. And uh, so this tropical crustacean extends to evaluation on this ring. And, uh, and this, uh, what do I mean by extent? We need that the, 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 the valuation applied to this very specific object are actually exactly the tropical crustacean for that. So valuation, the tropical crustacean extend in a non-unique way to a certain valuation of this. And actually to obtain this result, I used some, uh, so, some, uh, some uh, suggestion by Bill, who, uh, I mean, it's a paper by uh, Bergman about this uh, idea of uh, actually one, this idea of compactification of schemes by log, uh, the log compactification of schemes. So that's an idea that uh, he has explained to me and uh, which has been uh, reinvented by lots of people, including Morgan and Schalen, and, uh, and rediscovered by these people and also these tropical geometers. So, so using this uh, Bergman ideas, so about one of Bergman's results, you can actually see that they say this, uh, uh, this uh, tropical ratio, cross ratio extend in a non-unique way to a certain evaluation on this ring. So now the point that the evaluation on this ring is just an affine doubling by the duality subtraction. So, so those for those are not familiar. Here, so uh, maybe you should ask people who know about that. So, uh, so the idea that you. Uh, so first, I mean, the Duratis construction is, uh, is usually done with uh, evaluation on fields, but here you have this valuation and you take the, you take the, you divide by the ideal for which the valuation is infinite. So this ideal is actually a prime ideal, so the corresponding uh, 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 ring, quotient ring is actually an integral domain, so you can take the fraction ring of that, quotient ring of that, and then you obtain the valuation on the field, and a valuation on the field, I mean, give exactly, uh, ah, okay, I forgot to say that. You have a valuation of the field, but you also have a represent, maybe I should make this present. So you take this uh, PD of gamma, and then you divide it by this ideal, which is a set of those die for which nu is equal to infinity. I'm not sure about plus or minus, because I'm not sure that the convention is used. So this is a prime ideal, which in that this is a, this is a, this is a integral domain. And then now you uh, you take the quotient ring of that, and then you have a by construction you have a, so, so say you have a map from this ring to this to this new field. That's a quotient ring. Quotient field of that. And then by construction you have a you have a cross ratio with the view in this field, so you have a representation, a true representation this time, into PSL V of L, of, of F. And you also have a valuation of that, which comes from you, right? So that's exactly what you need to have a Bugatti's construction. You need to have a representation of gamma on that as an inner object, and you need to have a you need to have an evaluation, and then you obtain the action of gamma on the associated the building. So that's not, in some sense, that's something which is uh, also very folkloric because that's exactly what somehow what happens for for the uh, in the Morgan-Shallan construction. You use valuation. In a, in a hidden way, but the point is that I think that with this kind of device, the construction is a is a is a little more transparent. I mean, you it's really come from a set of definitions, which is not very difficult to, to, to write down. So, yeah, that was the the idea of having a concrete object to, uh, to explain what the higher lamination is. So. Um, I know this you really saw. Oh. Okay, so now, uh, so here's the idea. So, 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 so we really like representation variety as algebraic varieties. And what usually what we do is that we consider the ring of regular functions for which we trace as a regular function. And that's exactly supposed to be the, the 
the ring of a, of a function of that, the ring generated by the function. It turned out for this object, for this teaching representation, or more generally for this kind of another object, the regular function should be, set of regular function should be enlarged by considering this cross ratio. So somehow what I tried to explain is that this, this object, this other representation, should be considered as algebraic manifold uh, with respect to this ring of, uh, uh, with this extension of, uh, of uh, the cross ratio. Uh, yeah, that's a bunch of questions now. So, uh, and uh, so what are these questions? So first, I, I kind of think that this, uh, actually this, uh, this uh, sophisticated uh, object is an integral domain, and actually it's embedded into this, uh, the ring of function on, on each integral. So another way, I, I kind of hope that there is no other relations than the one I gave before. That's now a statement of what needs to be an injection. It's not an injection, that means that we mean there are some hidden relations in each component which I have not seen from before. So, so yeah, so it sounds very plausible, but uh, I still don't know how to prove that. So the other question is, do topical crustaceans appear as limits? And uh, but somehow that's not totally clear, in the sense that uh, you, you could use you could use the same ID to uh, this lot. I mean, this ring makes sense for, as I said, for, for, for without, with dropping the Nietzschean condition, which is its positivity. So, so this could also be used to compactify other other isomorphic uh, spaces, and uh, so then you would obtain other relations on this ring, which might or might not be for people for special. So I'm not really sure that, say, uh, in the end. Um, uh, uh, so now what about the earth theory? Yeah, so what about the earth theory? Yeah, I have no idea either. And, um, and uh, that's it. <laughs> Are there any other questions for my friend, friend of all? <laughs> <laughs> So for, for this construction, so I have another more sophisticated construction for which I can actually trace. So, I mean, all that is purely algebraic. It's something purely algebraic. So you could add these functions, so to say. So you could, could take this, the, the, somehow the cross ratio that I described here only this describes, only recovers the top eigenvalues divided by the, uh, by the smaller eigenvalues. So, so this means that the, on this action of this building, you somehow get from the topical cross ratio this part, which is like the top, the, the, the variation that adapts to the top eigenvalue to the last value. I don't see, for the moment, I don't see the others. But you could actually add, so you, you, you have to make a m much more a sophisticated a, a ring, which involves a other configuration points, or configuration with some sort of a, repetition and uh, add new functions, and this new function would actually see the whole, all the eigenvalues. So there are objects that, some kind of universal object that can see all the, all the eigenvalues. But for the moment, with this construction, you don't get all the eigenvalues of the, the action of the building, but only, so to say, the top one of the bottom. So I have a question. So okay. in rank two, there is a clear geometric minimum to emulation, right? You can think of this as a train track, or the uh, uh, trajectory of homomorphic differential, or <coughs> measured formulation. I mean, but there is a clear geometric minimum to this determinant, uh, whatever, from determinant two condition. So things are disjoint. So uh, some lines do not cross. Yeah. Is there anything like this? Any interpretation of all these lines? To even just that go into rank wonderful. three. So that would be wonderful. But oh, one, of the, one of the one of the would be to see that in this guy of one Right. Uh, yeah. So, but did you see any? So, so at the moment there is nothing like that. So uh, I've been thinking about all this question with David. We, we, David Duma was somehow uh, uh, some point. Well, anyway. So. Um, uh, 
yeah, it's quite possible that there's a, a nice notion of, of, uh, of active, uh, integral. So, so what would be nice would to be at, at least to have integral laminations. So uh, maybe integral lamination are related to uh, to uh, polycombs, right? Like there's some sort of chain tracks and that you replace the intersection point by some sort of helicopter. So I think that's actually even a suggestion already in a, in a paper by Parker and Charles. So that, that would be one of the possibilities for integral for integral definition. But no, I don't have an answer to the question. But I kind of hope that this journey current with this specific formula satisfied is somehow a recognizable current. But even if we just skip to those finitely many points, again, we can approximate laminations just by saying, okay, look at finitely many geodesics. Can you see anything in your determinant relations which would say, okay, here are some intersection conditions on this finitely many geodesics, no? So so it's something of conditions. You see this uh, rank condition as, uh, as uh, some sort of uh, higher order intersection with a configuration of points with uh, I mean, one, I mean, what is not, I mean, this is a beautiful formula for the intersection by, by Francis, you know, which you take the, the formula, uh, some integral of, of a configuration of a uh, point four points, right? But you can extend that to other configurations, maybe play some game, or maybe obtain some kind of self-intersection in that, set, that, that way. Yeah. I mean, I, I said the situation is pretty confusing. It's, uh, I, I don't really know what we should exactly do, but, uh, Pretty exciting. So I'm sorry, I'm not answering your question, so I would love to. Well, nobody can, I guess. <laughs> well, well, there is one example. There is one example by uh, Yan Li. So Yan Li has a, so the case of SS3. So he has a he has an example of uh, some object which he called webs, uh, which represented the lamination on surfaces. But that's a wrong tool. That's very specific to And uh, yeah, so okay. Thank you, Prof.